Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Nimza GP and welcome back to the channel. So as you can see, my last video is doing quite well, so I'd like to add on to that. Last time I showed you guys how to emulate PS2 games on your PC slash laptop. Yo, what's Today, up, guys? I'm going to show you how to emulate PS2 games on your Android device. So, yeah man, you heard right. But without further ado, let's get into it. God of War is currently at its all time Alright guys, so here we are on my Android phone home screen. I'm gonna give you a bit of a preview as to what this PS2 emulator looks like. But also in this video, I'm gonna go through everything step by step on how to run this emulator. From downloading the relevant apps, optimizing your phone and finally launching and optimizing the emulator. Alright, so with the preview out of the way, firstly, the app we're gonna be using is called Aether SX2, which you can get from the Play Store. There's a more recent version that has been released, the link is in the description down below. The second app is called Gamers GL Tool with Tuner. This app is handy to get a bit more performance out of your device. Alright, the next step is to open the browser on your smartphone because we're gonna need to download the BIOS for this emulator. Just like the previous video, we need the PS2 software to actually run the emulator. Now there is a few things to mention first and foremost about this emulator, alright? It's not gonna give you the best performance on an entry level slash old smartphone. So please bear that in mind. Secondly, and actually arguably a bit more important than the first point, is that development and bug fixes have completely stopped on this product. It's about a month now, due to people actually threatening the creator of this app. Yeah man, that's including death threats, alright? I have to also just add before we move on, that this app is actually in really great shape. Alright, so back to business. Downloading this BIOS, you need to create a folder named BIOS in your phone so that you'll be able to download and extract the files. Alright, I'm also not going to be showcasing where to get games as I don't want to be labeled as a pirate. These games are big guys, they are big. So please make sure that your phone has enough space to accommodate them. So the next step is optimizing or preparing your smartphone to run the emulator as smooth as possible. Open up your smartphone settings option and head on over to about device. Here you can see what type of phone I'm using just for comparison. Now if you have this RAM expansion option, I would suggest you enable it. Next you need to find the build number of your phone. Each phone has a different location. Right? Once you find it, tap on it 7 times to enable developer options. As you can see I already enabled. Alright, so you can head on out and select system settings. Over here you'll find developer options. The same one that we just unlocked. Alright, this actually gives you way more customizations for your smartphone. But please be careful and don't mess with stuff you're not sure. Alright, but what we're interested in is this over here, graphics driver preference. Most smartphones would have different options so you can switch it in and out and test which will give you the best performance. Alright? Now this might be specific to me, but disabling hardware overlays has given me better performance. You may test it out on your device. Alright, you can head on out of developer options and head straight to your battery settings. Over here you can enable performance mode and just so you do know, this will drain your battery quite rapidly and it will also increase the temperature of your phone. Alright, but all of that just to provide you with more performance. You can head on out and onto display settings. If you have the option, please select your refresh rate and select the high refresh rate instead of standard. Staying in display settings, you can change your front camera display or your cutout settings to full screen. Alright, 
just before opening up your game please clear your recent tasks so your phone can notify you that it's in the optimal condition all right so that's it with your smartphone optimizations all right now it's time to launch the emulator if you have downloaded the gamers gl2 we will be launching ata sx2 from within here so select gamers gl2 now select app list on the bottom left corner of your screen and choose ATA SX2. Select yes and tap the home icon on the bottom middle of your screen. Here you can see it's on auto gaming. So select the hamburger on the top left and choose game turbo. From here RAM and SD boost must be on enable. Enable systems performance tuner. Finally CPU and GPU boost must both be on enable. From here, tap the settings cog and apply these settings and this will launch ATA SX2 with the selected optimizations. Now, if you're launching the game for the first time, select Save Boot if you have a top of the range device, select Unsave Boot if you have a mid range to lower range device. Now the first thing you're going to notice is this Hyperboost game engine. This is standard on my Android device. Let's check if your phone has it built in too. But we'll get back to that in a minute. Right, now before doing anything else, let's load up the BIOS. This will be under App Settings and then scroll all the way over to the right to find the BIOS header. Select Import BIOS and find the folder you've created and extracted the files to earlier. Select that folder, come back and select what is on your screen under the BIOS header as I do. Now on to the Hyperboost game option I mentioned earlier. This option comes with most smartphones nowadays. If you have it, please enable it. As you can see, my device offers three modes of operation. For this app, I will be selecting Pro Gamer. Here's also a breakdown as to what each mode does. Another cool setting is a do not disturb setting which is quite handy if you have some time to yourself and you just want to beat that boss or clear that level. <laughs> Alright, before launching the game let's link up our controller. Any controller with Bluetooth that your phone supports is cool, I'm using my DualShock 4. Open the drop down menu, enable Bluetooth, link your Bluetooth controller with the phone, make sure that it says it's connected. Alright, now back to the app. Press on the hamburger, scroll down until you find controller settings. And here you're gonna choose the third heading, port one. Select automatic mapping, choose your controller, and boom, it's done. <laughs> you might also want to select the touchscreen head. Under touchscreen controller view, select none. Right, now it's time for some action. Let's boot up God of War 2. This game is on the standard setting. I'm also gonna showcase exactly what I do to optimize this emulator from within the emulation and graphic settings in a few. So sit back and enjoy. <laughs> So as you can see, it's not running all that great. Now let's open the settings and see what we can sort out. So just press the back button and it'll bring you over to the screen. Now press the I and don't scroll to the settings scroll. Go to general settings and expand cutout area setting on emulation screen orientation on landscape and down at the bottom on screen display. This is going to be your personal preference. Over to system settings, EE cycle rate, I select 50% which is minus 3 and this is if you have a mid to low level device. EE cycle skip, I select moderate which is number 2. Affinity control, I select performance course. Multi-thread and instant V1, I enable. Do not enable CDVD. Alright, and enable frame limit and I also increased my normal speed to 115 because I was recording. On to graphics, under the renderer. GPU renderer, I select Vulkan, upscale multiplier, that's gonna be your personal preference, pile in your filtering, make sure this is on PS2, everything else you can leave on default until you get to the texture preloading which you have to put on full. On hardware download mode, you select disable readbacks, sync GS3, aspect ratio you select stretch, 
don't change anything in FMV aspect ratio. And then threaded presentation on. Under advanced settings, all top options except for EEFPU, correct add and sub should be on. Everything else default until you reach VSync queue size. There, I select three frames, software rendering threads, I select three threads, and bilinear upscale must be on. So let's see what actually happens. Please bear in mind that I had to record this. I used my PC but still had issues with recordings. So please excuse me for that. So as you can see, there's a massive difference. After this, I'm also going to showcase two more games and leave this on expanded full screen. This is going to affect the quality as I basically stretched it out on OBS, right? The next two upcoming games are actually Need for Speed most wanted and one of my all-time favorites Metal Gear Solid 3. I, I basically included this so you guys can see the performance difference over three games. Right? So if you guys did find this video entertaining or helpful in any way, please smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel because we're actually on the road to 200 subs baby! Let's go! I'm Josie Marin and I play Mia in Need for Speed Most Wanted. Make sure you do all your racing in the game. On the streets, drive safely and responsibly, and wear your seatbelt.
minutes to drop off. Move to the rear. Activate bailout model. This is one for the history books. The world's first halo jump. Ten seconds to drop off. Stand by. Status okay. All green. Prepare for drop off. Countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Spread your wings and fly. God be with you. Who's that? <laughs> You're listening to a young Asian instrument. 